Hey, Shabbat Shalom Mishpoka! Welcome to another edition of Torah Tidbits. This is Torah Tidbits installment number 44 and is taken from the book of Deuteronomy and this Torah portion is called Devarim, which is the Hebrew word for Deuteronomy. And Devarim means words because the Torah portion gets its name from the first sentence or first few words of the Torah portion and this one goes something like this. And Moshe spake, or spake these words into B'nai Israel. So he spake these words, words, Devarim. What words did Moshe speak to B'nai Israel? Well, basically in this first Torah portion, he recaps the entire history of the first generation of, um, of uh, the children of Israel that came out of bondage from Egypt because he's addressing the second generation. So many of the things that happened to the first generation, either the second generation wasn't born yet, if they were born, they were too young, uh, therefore they you know, were just too young to comprehend what was going on or fully understand what was happening. So Moses is recapping um, everything that happened to the first generation. Why? Uh, you know, because you want to learn from people's mistakes. Uh, people who do not study history, they're doomed to repeat it. So he's telling, uh, Moshe's telling the second generation everything that happened to the first so they could avoid all these pitfalls, so they can remember all of the important lessons that were learned during the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, so they could, um, you know, um, avoid pitfalls that, that the first generation fell into, and they can learn from the first generation's mistakes. So, because the only people that are going in to the promised land from the first generation are only two people, and that's Joshua, because he's taken over leadership, and Kalev, Caleb, uh, because these two were the two faithful spies out of the twelve that came back from the promised land that gave a positive report saying, yes, it's a good land. Sure, there's giants, but we could take them. You know, we could do anything with the Lord's help. And the, the rest of the ten said, yeah, it's a good land, but there's giants. We don't want to mess with the giants. We look like grasshoppers in their sight. So all the first generation, including Moshe, is forbidden to go into the promised land. They all died in the wilderness except for Joshua and Caleb. So the things that uh, Moshe goes over is he goes over the encampments. Now the encampments uh, carried certain names, and the, the, the names had certain meanings. Basically it told what happened uh, while they were staying at those certain places. It talks about how he appointed the judges um, to, to assist him in judging Israel. Uh, talked about the twelve, the mission of the twelve sp spies that I just uh, kind of pointed out to you, and uh, how Esau, of Moab, and Ammon have their inheritance of the land also allotted to them by Yahweh. And just as you know, Esau and 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 all the other relatives of Bnei Israel that are pretty much now their enemies, God gave them their portion, and it's time for them to get their portion. The first generation refused to go into the promised land, and so He's basically said, Hey, don't don't make the same mistake that your parents did. You know, this land is yours. It, it, it's been yours, yours for 40 years, but your, your parents cho chose not to take it. They chose to rebel against the Lord. So don't rebel, go and take this land. And finally, uh, well, he also talks about the conquest of Sihon and Og. And why does he mention that? Because the first generation, the 10 spies said, there's giants in the land, there's giants in the land. Well, Sihon and Og were just two of such giants. And what happened? Bnei Israel took them. They, they, they took them and they killed them and got rid of these giant kings to prove that they could do it. And so Moshe's saying, look, yeah, there's giants in the land, but look, we took care of them. If there's any more left, we're going to take care of them again. Have faith. Don't be afraid. Take the land because it's yours. Finally, he also talks about the inheritance of Reuben, God, and Manasseh on the current side of the Jordan that they're on because once they cross over to the other side, uh, the rest of the tribes are going to get their inheritance in the promised land. So he's kind of give them a, a gentle rebuke, not to make the f mistakes of their parents, but also kind of a pep talk to say, hey, keep going. You can do it. This is something that's achievable. Now, sometimes in life, uh, speaking of the, the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, and he re Moshe recaps that, sometimes it feels like that God has us in a holding pattern in our lives. Um, you know, sometimes it feels like we're a hamster on a wheel and we're just running, 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 going nowhere fast. Or we're like a, jo a dog going around in circles chasing his tail. Or that we're um, getting ready to land at the airport, but because uh, air traffic is tied up, we're in a holding pattern. And we're just flying around in circles, around in circles, seem like for no reason. But when God has you in a holding pattern and you can't progress any further in your spiritual walk, know that there's a purpose behind that. Romans 8.28 says that all things work together for good, for them that are called according to his purpose. And, uh, you know, I've been in such holding patterns where 
um, God had me there because either I was in rebellion and I needed to repent or I, had, I stayed at a certain place and I was in this holding pattern because there was a lesson I needed to learn and either I was too stubborn to learn it, too dumb to realize that I needed to learn it or something of that nature. And I'm not talking about days or months or even weeks. Sometimes I've been in a holding pattern for years at a time because of my stubborn stiff-neckedness. See, that proves I'm Jewish because I'm stubborn and stiff-necked at times. But like I said, there's there's always a reason. Usually it's either rebellion that you need to repent of or it's that there's a lesson you need to learn. Now, when we're in this holding pattern, God won't let us progress any further, but we can go back. And if we go back, it's it, the only choice is our own. It's our fault that we go back, but we can't go any further because we either have to repent or there's a lesson we need to learn to go forward. Now, in the half Torah portion, in Isaiah chapter 1, uh, it was the issue of rebellion that uh, that uh, Hashem is addressing B'nai Israel, and it's related to this Torah portion because the rebellion of the first generation refusing to take the land. Now in Isaiah, you read such verses that says, I'm sick of your burnt offerings, I'm sick of your high holy days, I'm sick of your festivals. What? God ordained these. Why is he sick of them? He's sick of them because Israel was just going through the motions. They weren't keeping these festivals or giving these sacrifices from their heart out of love where it needed to be. Instead, they were just doing it because they were told to do it, and they figured, well, if we do it, we're going to earn brownie points with God, and we're going to be in good with God. And God said, no, that's not the purpose of the Torah. That's not the purpose of the law. That's not the purpose of the sacrifices. That's not the purpose of the feasts. You have to have an inward change and then show that inward change through your outward actions. That's what it's all about. And he says, I'm sick of your feast and burnt offerings because you're not offering them in the prescribed manner that I asked you to. Now, in the uh, the Brit Hadasha portion, I chose the book of James, chapter 4, um, verse 6. And the reason I chose this because it shows us how we can get out of this holding pattern that sometimes we find ourselves in. And Yaakov, James 4, 6, it says, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy into heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of Yahweh, and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one to another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the Torah and judgeth the Torah. But if thou but if thou wilt judge the Torah, thou art not a doer of the Torah, but a judge. Therefore there is only one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Go to now ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and stop basically stop right there. But basically, the way to get out of this holding pattern is to repent and obey Torah, to humble yourself, not say, oh God, humble me, because God doesn't do the humbling. We humble ourselves, and once God sees that we're broken, and we begin to humble ourselves, and we begin to repent, then God gives us the grace. He gives us the grace to plow through it, you know? Um, so if we rebel against the law, we we are self-proclaimed judges of other people's righteousness and therefore we break the Torah and make the Torah basically of none effect. So, you know, the way to get out of the whole holding pattern is to repent and to humble yourselves, to resist Hasatan because it says resist the devil and he will flee from you, and to love one another. That's what it is. That's what the key is all about. So hopefully uh, you got something out of this Torah portion, maybe a little something different, a little something new because the first part of Devarim, it's just recapping. You're like, oh yeah, well I've heard this, I've seen this, I know about this. What's the big deal about this? Well, that's the lesson to take away from it. That's the lesson to be learned. Hopefully, uh, Hashem reveals more lessons to you as you read the Torah portion. You get much more out of it than you would have gotten from me today. So enjoy the Torah portion, half Torah portion, and Brit Kadesha portion, and tune in again next time for the next installment of Torah Tidbits. So Shabbat Shalom and Shavuot Tov Mishpokah. Have a great day. Bye.